Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available, and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-217-1797. 800-217-1797. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-217-1797. 800-217-1797. The Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, in this week's book report, we've got a whole bunch of numbers to report. We've got a couple uh, legislative uh, updates as well in a couple different states. We have a bunch of deals to talk about. One massive deal that just came out recently between uh, DraftKings and the UFC. Yeah, I just saw that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's start off what we always do with the uh, sports betting numbers reported uh, in a couple states. These are for the month of January. Uh, Welcome to the sports betting industry, Virginia. Yes, a very historic reporting. This is their first ever Sports betting numbers report from the uh, state of Virginia, right? And also, they had a very good first 11 days in business. Oh, this is only for 11 days, right? The uh, end of January. Okay. Second half of January, basically. Uh, Virginia Lottery, which runs the sports betting industry in the state of Virginia, or the Commonwealth of Virginia, I should say, uh, reported that the handle for the month of January, their very first handle, was $58.896 million. For 11 days, that's very good. Yep. And also with only a couple books. Yeah, they, no, they only have about five books running. It's only going to get better. And this is this was, I think, aided by the Super Bowl a little bit when they yeah, first launched. Yeah, was it February second or third? Yeah, or so I don't, even know, I don't the, even know what date it was. The second half of January is where you put your futures in, your Super Bowl bets, your yeah, props, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, um, so. uh, the uh, betters won fifty five point three nine million uh, for a combined six point point eight percent win percentage for the books themselves. Uh, unfortunately, the adjusted gross revenue was not where a lot of people expected it to be. They had a negative $3.235 million net revenue. And that that's the adjusted, uh, adjusted revenue. That's where you take the overall amount of revenue that the books brought in from that 6% hold. And uh, you uh, take a look at getting rid of the uh, promos, all the other stuff. There's about... Six million dollars in promos that they took out of that number because sure, uh, sure. fifty-eight point eight minus fifty-five is about three million. But uh, again, not a bad showing. You expect that to be the case for a new market where they have a negative revenue, because what do sports books always do when they first launch? Promos, 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 free bets. Yeah, I mean it's only eleven days too, and we're, these aren't January numbers. These are eleven days in January, so it's only going to get better. They're going to have a full month in February to really. Really earn. So uh should and be interesting to see the numbers next month. State brought in taxes of $39,700 for the 11 days. So right. that's actually a good indicator of the month is going to be a decent number for the state in terms of taxes. Uh, Iowa brought out their numbers for January, $149.5 million state handle, $11.343 million in revenue, uh, 765000 in change in taxes. They had an approximate 7.6% win rate. 81% of this January handle was from online betting. Yeah, I always think that should be higher, especially in this day and age with the, the pandemic and a lot of things aren't fully reopened. 81%, you know, is, is rather surprising. I mean, I think New Jersey's over 90% people betting online. 
Well, you got to remember, this state just recently got rid of that in-person registration requirement. Iowa, you mean? Iowa, yeah, yeah. Iowa. Yeah. And, um, you know, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, no, it does. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, FanDuel, in their earnings call, uh, reported that they had six to seven times the number of new customer registrations in January of this year than they did of December 2020, which is where the in-person registration switched over between okay. these two months here, de- December and January. Um, one one casino property, and I, this always stands out to me every time I look at this number, even you know doing the prep work here, the Ameristar Casino had all of its $6.4 million handle bet in person. They are one of the few casinos that does not have online sports betting yet. That's pretty rare. They will have it. They have a deal with Barstool. So they, be they're going to do great. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's going to be a great app for them. I think it's going to be fun to watch this uh, market develop as well. Moving over into the Northeast, Rhode Island brought out their January numbers. 39.8%, 39.8 million dollar handle for sports betting in the month of January. That is a record for the state. Hey, congratulations, Rhode Island. That was up almost 75% more than December of 2020. So they had a huge jump December to January in terms of handle. 29, 21.9 million was wagered on their mobile sports books in January, 17.9 at the two land based uh, retail books, uh, Twin River and Tiverton. Tiverton's the old uh, uh, Newport, Newport Grand Casino. Newport New- Grand. Newport Grand Casino. Yeah, the old slot hall. Yeah, it's a slot hall. Yeah, they uh, they actually have a section where I guess they have the windows so you can uh, make bets on, uh, bets with. Uh, but uh, which is the one we were at? Was it Lincoln? They had We've more. Been to both. We've, been to both. I, I, I've been to both, but the one that actually had a kind of a sports bar, sports thing that you can put your bets in. What, that's what, that's the actual. That's Lincoln, right? That's Twin River. That's the one in Lincoln. Okay, yeah. Now that, that's a pretty. I mean, it's not huge, but and it's not the stadium seating thing. It's more of a sports bar that you know you can place bets in. And you always see the uh, regional sports network. What is it? Uh, New England Sports Network. Some of their pre and post game stuff happens from. That sports book. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Uh, so uh, I've, I've actually caught some of the broadcasts here. They have a good setup where it is because uh, it's it's actually a pretty big location with that sports bar mixed in with the sports book, too. Um, let's see. Total revenue for the month of January in Rhode Island was $3.7 million. That's uh, almost 50% higher than what brought what they uh, the revenue was in December, which uh, $2.5 million. Uh, year to date. Revenue in the seven months through the end of January here, $21 million. Uh, players uh, had, there was a handle of 193.5%. Why do I keep saying percent with this? It's driving me nuts. $193.5 million handle in the seven months to the end of January. No, oh, okay. Uh, Delaware had a handle for the month of $11.7 million. That was uh, 33% higher than the $8.8 million that came in in December. Revenue was about $1.7 million in January, which was about 55% higher than what was in the uh, month of December. We're looking at possibly a $4 billion uh, month in handle in January. Well, look, if, if you're a sports book, these months are great for you. I mean, January, you got playoff in the NFL. You, uh, February, you have the uh, Super Bowl. In March, you have March Madness. I mean, this should be the golden time for sports books. So, uh, and also, yeah, this is also, when they should have, they should be breaking record handles every, every month now. You also got the start of the NASCAR season, too. Sure. sure and, uh, right. NASCAR betting has been really, really, uh, one of the surprising areas I've, I've, I've thought. Well, I consistently try. I mean, I, I don't do very well in NASCAR betting. So, uh, you know, it's fun. You know, it makes me watch yeah. the race from beginning to end. And so, you know, it's fun. Yeah. Well, you know, it's one of those things where uh, it as, engages as long as it's, me. I guess that's the buzzword for betting. It, it engages me. As long as it takes the place of table tennis at some point. I, I can't stand right. table tennis. I, I don't think it'll ever leave the top five hey, in Colorado. Look, if it has fans, it has fans. Yep. Well, good for them. I if, think we if, talked about it last week. Between, if it's making the sports book money, good. Yeah. yeah show table tennis. Yeah, between Colorado and Oregon, which have table tennis as one of their top sports bet on, you know, that – that sport, I, I don't know. I again, I, I, I don't get the fascination. I think it needs more it. production value. Like I said last week, you know, the one I saw it, it was just a picture of two guys playing ping pong. I mean, I think it needs better production value. Uh, a couple legislative notes to hit: uh, New Hampshire. We just talked about them uh, 
in relation to Rhode Island and some of the other New England states, um, they are they they have a bill in the uh, in the House going forward to remove the ten license cap for retail sports betting locations. So you may see more towns with sports betting uh, parlors in them OTBs that sort of thing for retail sports betting. Great. Uh, they also will be this bill would allow in game wagering. This is something I'm shocked at. I mean, in-game betting is something that I thought everyone had. I can't believe New Hampshire doesn't have in-game betting, which means when the game is going on and the lines are changing and the totals are changing, you can place a bet while the game is going on. I, I, di- I didn't know New Hampshire did not have that. I'm shocked. And it's such a good market for sports betting, a good new market. Solid for where it is in, in the country, New England. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, there's no one else around it. No, no other, other than Rhode Island, maybe Vermont. You know, if you're in Massachusetts, if you're in Vermont, if you're in Maine, you go to New Hampshire to place your sports bet. Well, maybe they will have some competition from Connecticut if they get their act together a little bit here. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, the state the state of Connecticut just announced an agreement, as we're taping this anyway, announced an agreement with the Mohegan Tribe for expanded gaming and sports betting, uh, 13%, 13.75% tax rate on sports wagering, the Connecticut Lottery would be able to do 15 retail sports betting locations throughout the state, including Hartford and Bridgeport, which are two cities that seem to be struggling an awful lot, especially Bridgeport. Um, it's a 10-year deal, and um, the only problem with this is they're facing opposition from some legislatures, and again, this may change by the time this airs, that the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation, which runs Foxwoods, Mohegan Tribe runs Mohegan Sun in Uncasville. Foxwoods has not yet agreed to it. How did you pronounce that name again? Mashantucket. Mashantucket. Okay. He said Mashantucket. Mashantucket? Mashantucket. Well, maybe that's the other. That's the New Jersey pronunciation yeah. of that tribe. But, uh, I, yeah, that's uh, they haven't agreed to it. They may agree to it by the time this airs or something similar. Um, Virginia uh, has legislation on the books now that will allow the state's five yet-to-be-built casinos to have sports betting and not count against the cap of sports betting licenses that are currently on the books. Oh, that's big. And uh, last but not least, we had two guys in Massachusetts, two legislatures, le- legislators in Massachusetts, introduce a bill that would give sports betting to bars and restaurants. Which is going to go nowhere. And I don't even know why they introduced it, but they had to, I guess, for their constituents. They get their names on the news. Yeah. That would join the other, what, 14, 15 bills in Massachusetts. Now, we're going to move over to the deals. We had one huge deal to talk about. Uh, DraftKings has become the UFC's first official exclusive sportsbook and daily fantasy partner in the U.S. and Canada. They are also the named present. They were named the presenting partner of the UFC Fight Clock. Uh, which is their new timekeeping system for the uh, fight nights. Before I comment on it, I, I, I would guess I would have to take a look at it because I don't know what technology goes into a clock or how original it is. I mean, I, if their name is just on it, okay, DraftKings clock. Well, it's but the I, UFC fight clock. Well, uh, yeah, I know, but, uh, you know, what kind of technology they, is they going have, to uh, I, I pulled some of the language better? From, I pulled some of the language from the press release. And yeah, tell me about the clock. Again, they use a lot of big words to say you know, to not say what it really is. Uh, the UFC Fight Clock uses state-of-the-art technology, including the most flexible, high-definition screens in the world, to provide fighters and fans with the most accurate timekeeping system in combat sports. So, obviously, these are screens that are going to be in some okay. of the corners of the octagons. All right, yeah, great. great. And they're going to yeah. be able to keep time. More I mean, I'd accurately. be interested when I'm watching it. What, what you know, what difference I would see in the DraftKings new clock as opposed to the old clock that wasn't sponsored by DraftKings. But you know, I'm I'm very interested in taking a look at it. Well, I guess if you're if you're an MMA fan, uh, they may uh, the clock may not be in the right spot for everybody watching the fight. Okay, all right. And I guess that's what they've been trying to do and come up with a way to I guess synchronize that, four different clocks. That's why I'm excited about looking at it. So. <laughs> uh, regarding the sports book side and the fantasy sports side, UFC is going to be doing a uh, free to play game, uh, UFC pool with ten thousand dollars in prizes. Uh, they're going to be available for fans to enter and compete nationwide. They'll also uh, be having special uh, uh, promo uh, bets, uh, parlay bets, uh, profit boost for 
DraftKings customers for UFC fights. You're going to see UFC, uh, DraftKings branding everywhere on UFC uh, uh, locations and uh, apps and everything. You're going to see UFC branding on the DraftKings site. Um, and also you're going to see DraftKings odds integrated into the broadcast for UFC on their uh, wherever they're broadcasting from as well as on the UFC Fight Pass. Uh, it's actually kind of a wide-ranging deal here. It's probably one of the more complete deals I've seen. Where it just it's everything. Yeah, no, it, it seems like it's pretty uh, comprehensive. And uh, I I don't know if they're going to be the only ones. I mean, every time I see an exclusive sportsbook deal, there's always another sportsbook that comes along and does a deal. Well, well, that's what I'm curious about. Does that mean I can't use any other sportsbook to bet on the UFC, or how how is that going to shake out? I guess we're going to have to find out. This may be the only official book. Okay. Where you're going to see UFC branding everywhere. Okay. All right. Because that's part of the deal where they get the branding rights. Okay. Uh, again, I, I don't know if, how far ranging the rights deal goes, whether names and likenesses of the fighters are going to be used, but uh, at least they're going to have the UFC branding everywhere for it. That's a big deal for DraftKings. Congratulations. That's a big deal for both sides. Oh, absolutely. Uh, BetMGM did a deal with the Bo, Bo Russia Dortmund German Champion Soccer Club. They are the first U.S. partner of a German soccer team. Uh, it's cross-promotional. They're going to be able to use player imagery and team logos as well as uh, additional team assets for marketing applications. So they actually have likenesses involved in this. Oh, okay. All with right. this deal. Uh, that's that, that, that's where my question for the DraftKings thing Are they out. going to be all over the uh, soccer jerseys? Like, uh... <laughs> uh, I don't know if Germany has that ban because some, some countries yeah. over there have the bans now where okay. they don't put the names of the books on the... Uh, I'd be very curious. So they'll yeah. probably be around the ring of the uh, stadium, but um, well, they're also, curious to see if they have jerseys. There's also going to be BetMGM branded content on the club's English language social media channel, Black Yellow. Black Yellow. That's that's their nickname, I guess. I'm assuming that's the color of the teams? Yes. Okay, black black and yellow. When you think of Bo Russia Dortmund, think Bumblebee. Black and yellow. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is now a vendor in Tennessee for sports betting. Okay. I don't know what that means, but okay. You go into uh, Buffalo Wild Wings in Tennessee, you're going to be able to see a uh, BetMGM odds and... Uh, statistics being flashed all over the screens okay because buffalo wild wings does have a national deal with BetMGM. mgm okay that doesn't mean you know when you go to uh buffalo wild wings you know sometimes they have that uh i don't, I don't even know what it is a tablet that, that they little, put on your the little t the game tablet. you're not going to be able to bet there right no but you will be able to see odds and stuff you'll, you'll see odds yeah. and things like yeah. that you, okay. you, you have to have your bet mgm app ready to go okay again the question comes up whether or not bet mgm will be able to block other sports books in a Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't know. I, I seriously doubt that, but, you know, it would be interesting to see if they do Well, that. there was a situa There are situations in Nevada where some of the other sports books are blocked on some properties. Oh, okay. So and the technology does exist whether or not it's going to be in use in Buffalo Wild Wings. I think that would be kind of unfair because I think Buffalo Wild Wings was one of everybody coming into the restaurant. Sure, sure. So, but we'll see. And um, last but not least, the Oregon Lottery has announced that they are looking at changing platforms for their Oregon sport scoreboard app for sports betting purposes. Right now it's Intralot and SB Tech, but they are looking at a more SB Tech-based platform. And since SB Tech is owned by DraftKings, you got to think it's going to be a DraftKings monopoly, just like it is in New Hampshire. It's going to be that way in Oregon at some point. Be interesting to see. And uh, it'll it'll be it'll be. Uh, It'll be uh, interesting to see exactly where DraftKings goes because the only other place like that is D.C., which has the one sports betting app okay. uh, run by Interlot. And last but not least, Wynn has done a deal with San Francisco-based sports podcast platform Blue Wire uh, to build a Blue Wire podcast studio on the gaming floor of Wynn Las Vegas uh, to promote their online sports betting and casino app, WinBet. And that's uh, the end of this week's uh, book report. Again, there's a lot of other stories we didn't hit. Head on over to TurnpikeSportsRadio.com, click on the blog button, and you'll be able to see these stories that we did talk about and these stories that we didn't have time to hit on the blog in print form. So uh, that's, uh, that's all I got for this week on the book report. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike. Turnpike.